I stand here now as a representative of the Faculty of Law, but I think I need to establish my credentials as an EU lawyer. As a private international lawyer, of course, inevitably and inescapably, uh, most of my subject uh, is now, at least for the time being, regulated by EU law. I should, however, come clean. As many of you will know, those who ply my trade are habitually severely critical of those EU regulations and of the decisions um, of the Court of Justice. I would like to put on record, however, that none of my colleagues who I speak to would actually wish those regulations to disappear, however critical we might be of them. I wanted to do two things in my concluding remarks. First of all, I wanted to offer some thanks. Thanks on behalf of the faculty. I wanted to thank Albertina for her hard work on this, and I also wanted to thank Felicity for her hard work on this. I wanted to thank all of our speakers and moderators in the course of today, but I also wanted to thank everyone who has given up their day to be at this wonderful and interesting event. The second thing that I wanted to do was to put the evolution of cells in a wider context, a context which serves to highlight its importance in the history of this faculty, and I hope that will lead inevitably to me expressing optimism about the future of cells and its work. It's clear, I think, that the foundation of cells 25 years ago came at a defining moment in the history of this faculty, and it must be seen in the context of parallel trends. It coincided, not exactly, but approximately, with other important changes in the faculty. First of all, and I'm inclined to put this top of the list myself, the move to this wonderful building, which has transformed our lives and our view of ourselves. Secondly, round about the same time as the foundation of cells, or at least round about the same time that it got into its stride, a decision was made in this faculty to expand, to expand dramatically our LLM programme in terms of student numbers and also the courses on offer. I'm also bound to say, of course, that uh, the foundation or the early years of Searles coincided with the, in retrospect, rather obvious decision, at the time it seemed more radical, to appoint a dedicated specialist professor of European law. It was the move to this building that gave Searles, although it existed before, its home and, as it were, turbocharged its activities as a result. It was the growth in the LLM, with its raft of courses and its eager new students, many of whom came from other EU states, and the appointment of a specialist professor, which, with the advent of cells, kick-started this faculty's rise to prominence in the area of EU law. It's now hard to imagine that at the time of its foundation, CELS was the only centre in the Faculty of Law. So central, no pun intended, was CELS to the Faculty in its early days, and indeed to this building, that at one time, the lettering on the glass by the door indicated that this building housed three institutions. The Faculty of Law, the Squire Law Library, and the Centre for European Legal Studies. All these historic developments, not least the founding of cells, came at a time of real transition in the evolution of this faculty. This was truly a transformative moment, a watershed. For those of us who were young academics at the time, all these things together created a brave new world. Our view of where we were and what we were doing simply transformed. Up until that point, the faculty had, of course, seen itself as a great national law school, a national institution that focused primarily, not exclusively, but primarily on English law. 
Our competitors, not that we would at that time ever have seen things in such Darwinian terms, our competitors were in the UK. Indeed, they were in England. Our curriculum, like our old buildings, was venerable, but a little faded. The mood board in the faculty was, I think, shabby chic. Yes, we taught and published in international law, comparative law, even EC law as it was, but these activities were regarded as speciality interests, not central to what we did. How much has changed? Now our worldview is different. We see ourselves as one of the world's great law schools. We see ourselves in a global context. We judge ourselves against the best in the world. We compete internationally for students, especially postgraduate students. Central to this vision, however, is our role as a European law school. And I adopt here the broad sense in which Kenneth uses that expression. A European law school in the European tradition. The outward and visible sign of that, of course, is cells. It's worth, by way of a footnote, just considering some facts and figures to put this into perspective. Around 20% of the academic staff of this faculty are from EU states other than the UK, as were just shy of 50% of our LLM students last year. A single optional course in, as it was, EC law has given way to the extraordinary buffet of courses that we now offer, which are entirely or partly devoted to EU law, including, I should add, my own. This is not, of course, because of cells, or entirely because of cells, but cells has, I think, set the tone and has in turn drawn oxygen from our change in culture. As this suggests, CELS has always been central to this faculty since its inception, central to its work and to how we see ourselves. Clearly, the last 20 years have seen CELS develop into one of the premier centres for the study of EU law in the world. In doing so, if I might, as chair of the faculty, shamelessly steal the limelight, it has made this faculty one of the premier centres for the study of EU law in the world. It would be foolish, especially in the light of Catherine's moving remarks, to deny that there are challenges ahead. I suppose I am paid to be an optimist, although I think I am by nature, but I must say to me, a challenge is just an opportunity by another name. I am confident that cells and all those associated with European law in this faculty have a distinctive role and an important voice, especially in the near future. Indeed, for all the travails associated with Brexit, there is a real opportunity for cells to continue to shape the debate. There is also, I should say, an opportunity for this faculty to be a leader in teaching and research in this new landscape. Certainly, from an institutional point of view, our commitment is to be on the front foot and to take the lead in this. Certainly, I can assure you that in uncertain times, the Cambridge Law Faculty is dedicated to maintaining its position. Its position as an international centre of excellence in teaching and research, as a preeminent centre for work in EU law, and as a great European law school rooted in the culture and the values of the wider European legal tradition. So I think it is entirely appropriate for me not merely to congratulate Selves on its 25th birthday, but with confidence to wish it well for a long and distinguished future.